Charlie Parsons for the stomping ground powered by Wow Hydro and available on the zone. Mr. Frank Warren, my third time this week, believe it or not. I feel like I'm taking the, uh, the biscuit a little bit. Mr. Frank Warren, how are you, sir? I'm good, young man. How are you doing? I'm good. What a place is Riyadh. I thoroughly enjoy myself out here. The food's good, the hospitality's good. I mean, just on your end? Everything is first class. I mean, everything is first class out here. You know, you're well looked after. The hotels are... You know, they're full, full five, six Fantastic, star hotels. Yeah. The, and as you say, the selection of food, cuisine, every restaurant, every good restaurant, top restaurant in the world is here. Um, let me ask you, in terms of travelling fans, there's a lot. I've got friends that have flown yeah. in from Scotland, from where I live, back home. A lot of people coming out, a lot of boxing well, fans. Well, they all bunks off school. Wow, low blow. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be an interview about a little slide digging there. Um, but that shows the magnitude of the occasion, right? And also, I suppose, with all of this, it's about the whole Vision 2030 thing as well and getting people to travel over, sure. and they are. Yeah. Well, look, it's, 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 you know, when you look at it, the Riyadh season uh, started for boxing last October, and look what's happened in that short space, of, you know, period of time. It's been amazing. Some of the biggest shows that happened in the world are, are taking place here, and... Uh, on Saturday, we've got the biggest fight of the century happening here. Well, let's talk about the workouts yesterday. We saw Tyson Fury go southpaw. I just interviewed Amir Khan there, and he said he did that many a time throughout his career, and it doesn't really do anything, but it's all part of the theatrics and everything. Anything we can read into that, do you think, at all? No, look, when that first bell goes, Tyson's the type of fighter who adapts to each situation. We know he switch hits anyway, but here... Once he's in there, he's, he's, he's one of those guys who's got a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Frank, ever since his comeback, you would have witnessed just how cool, calm and collected he is through fight weeks. How does the Tyson Fury of this week compare to the Fury of Fort good Wilders? Place. He's in a very good place. First of all, I think he's so pleased with the, you know, the physical condition that he's in. And that back-to-back -back camps, without a fight in between because of the cut, is, uh, I think it stood him in good stead. And as I said to you the other day, yeah, bad comes good. So he's in tremendous physical condition. And also, most importantly, he's in, in great mental, mentally. You know, he, he's bang on it. When you see the uh, Tyson that was around the Wilder fights, is this the same sort of Tyson or an even better Tyson? He's, a, of... he's a very confident fighter anyway. You know, he's yeah. always been like that. He's got a lot of confidence. He believes in his own ability, and he's got and he's got certainly got ability. That's for sure. And as far as um, you know, the Wilder fight, he believed he was going to win those fights, which he did. First one should never have been a draw. He believed he should have he'd win them, and that's how it turned out. And this fight, he really does fancy it. He feels this guy has Usyk has the style, even though he can be awkward, that will gel. He's always managed to get in opponents' heads, and this week, and I even said to Tyson, maybe foolishly myself, is it different for the case with Alexander Usyk? And he said, no, I'm Dr. X. I get in people's heads when people can't get in their head. When he goes to the toilet, he thinks of me. When he wakes up in the morning, he thinks of me. Vice versa, you could say the same a little bit about Alexander Usyk in that he's so sort of... You almost look at him like a man who doesn't care as such. He's always laughing. Well, he's a, Do you think he is a, in his head? He's a very, very professional fighter. I mean, look, you've got to look at his background. Olympic gold medalist, so he was the best in that weight division, won the gold medal. Um, probably the best cruiserweight of his generation, unified all the titles, undefeated. He's been a heavyweight now for four and a half years. Um, used to fighting big guys, you know, big, big man in AJ, beat him twice. And certainly in the first fight, he was out, out jabbing him, which was I was quite surprised at. He, 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 he's a, a very cool and collected guy. Um, I've seen him a little bit rattled though as he was against Daniel against Daniel Dubois so that's going to be interesting um, but everyone keeps talking about Tyson and his weight you want to look at Usyk and the weight he's carrying he looks to have bolts up quite a bit so it's going to be interesting to see what he weighs when he comes in because this is going to be about the battle of the jabs to start with who can establish superiority in the early rounds you know, working on their game plan, whatever it may be. And one thing about Tyson is that he, he definitely has speed. For a big man, he's very, very agile, very light on his feet, very deceptive from that perspective. 
a good, great boxing brain. And this sounds a little bit like I'm talking about Usyk as well, by the way. Yeah. But I think the, the weight thing is going to be quite interesting. You know, I think Tyson will be fast and, I, and he'll be furious. And I also feel the question mark is with Usyk. There are a couple of question marks with Usyk. Obviously, he doesn't like shots to the body. And, you know, how this, if he's carrying this extra weight, which he looks like he's very bulked up to me, how that's going to affect him. Um, just as a whole, when I, uh, when I speak to the fighters and everything in terms of, of, of this Saturday, uh, they say it's obviously the biggest occasion they've ever fought on, and you talk about the guys on the undercard, you've got Moses Atalma on the card. How important is it for someone like him, who we see as maybe the future of the heavyweight division, to get the experience? And this may be the home to be for a fighter like him over the next coming years. Well, that, that would be the case. He will still fight you know, in the UK and around the world, but certainly... I can see it all happening for him up here because he's the he's the young guy that you know he's 19. He's still a teenager. Yeah, you know, is he younger than you? I'm yeah, not sure. He, he is young, younger. He's than actually younger than you. He's a Do you reckon his mates have to bump off school to come I think out? They might <laughs> come he's a uh, he's a young guy. He's he's got tremendous talent, as you know, and uh, a great amateur pedigree. Mm. Amateur, world am youth junior heavyweight champion knocks everybody out in the first round. World heavyweight youth champion, done an absolute job on them. Anybody you speak to in boxing who sparred with him or shared a ring with him, they all say the same thing, that he's a, he's a bit of a handful, and we know he's a bit of a handful. And he seems to be growing into this as well. He's become, in the last year, he's become very good with the media, talks well, very relaxed. And more importantly, he's enjoying it at this stage. He really does seem to be enjoying it. So he's got a platform on Saturday night where he can go out in his first title fight. He's only had eight fights in one year. And he can go out on, on, on Saturday and make a statement. Um, talk to me about the co-main event, Myris Breedis and Joao Pattaya. It's a funny story with Joao Pattaya because I believe he watched the knock, uh, Turkey Al Sheikh watched the knockout of Jordan Thompson and said, this guy is brilliant. He must yeah. be on my car. Then we saw what he did to your man, Alex <coughs> Zorro, Excuse back in December. He has an opportunity, a rematch against Myris Breedis. He's so cool, calm and collected, but you can never write off a man like Breedis. And it's almost like that that was a main event in its own right a year and a half ago. We now have it as the co-main here. Correct. They're both, one's IBF champion, the other one's former. So they've both have been world, one is world champion and one has been. Rematch. And it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. I mean, Oppertire is the man at the moment in that division. <coughs> So we'll see, um, you know, we'll see Harry Fares in this, but, you know, he's, he'll be out to make a statement as well. Don't worry about that. Can Anthony Kakachi upset the odds? He struggled with moment momentum a little bit over the last couple of years, but people have always said that if there's ever a man who was going to relish and take an opportunity, it would be. However, Joe Cordina, a lot of people think the best man in the division. How do you see that fight going through? Well, you know, Joe Cordina is the best man in the division, but Anthony's he's had a little bit of a stop-start for a little while, but that's because he's had injuries and he's pulled out fights for various reasons. But look, this is his opportunity now. It's Northern Ireland v Wells, two Brits in now. Um, and you know it's going to be a good fight because it's a domestic fight. And, uh, and I'm quite sure we're going to see something special. But you know, Kakachi is a, um, he's a very good fighter on his day, there's no doubt about that. And this is a great opportunity for him. You know, you want, don't get no better than fighting for a world title. That's what everybody's dreams are. And I think he's 32, about 32 years of age now. So if he's ever going to do it, this is the time to do it. Just a few more quick ones. We know how close you are with His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh. He's thrown out two mega fights that we'd be so excited to see as part of Riyadh season and everything that you guys are doing. Uh, one being Javonta Tank Davis versus uh, Anui, which would be a huge fight, obviously, if the weights could match. But something that we all get sort of goosebumps even talking about, right? Well, you do, but as you say, the weights have got to match. But, I mean, if that could happen, they're two of the best fighters in the world. And Inui, I think, he's probably... Oh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's in the top two, that's for sure. Uh, and then just lastly, Canelo uh, and... God, my mind's gone blank here. Uh, Canelo and Terence Crawford, I don't know how I'd... It's a no-brainer, that huge, one, isn't it? it? Yeah. I mean, that fight would just be mega, mega. You know, that's a fantastic fight. And if anybody can do it, it's AG. And I said lastly, I spoke to Eddie Hearn yesterday. When you guys did a joint interview, uh, you said that you felt that Frank and Eddie were almost softening you up. He says the exact same. He says he loves 
dealing with you and I don't know he doesn't know why it hasn't happened sooner obviously everything's played a part to make it happen I know we've spoke a lot about the 5v5 but I, you guys genuinely I can't seem to say a bad word about each other you just like working together now well because it's it, because they're good fights that we're both boxing nuts you know my son George who, who, who basically deals with him most of the time deals with Eddie most of the time <coughs> they built up a good rapport you know so have I with him and it's for the good of boxing there's no doubt about it. I feel a bit of a schmuck that we didn't do it years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, we tried to do it, and, but it's taken uh, His Excellency and Riyadh season to pull this together. And we're two weeks away from yet another brilliant night of boxing. Well, Frank, I always really appreciate your time. We look forward to the press conference imminently and uh, Fury Usyk on Saturday night. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.